Hello and welcome to the Manifesting a New Life TV show and my name is Patricia LeBlanc, your host. I'm really excited because today I have another amazing guest on, on our show and I'm really excited to announce, uh, to welcome Tamia Dow. Tamia is committed to educating and empowering people to live to the dream. She's a retired police detective who worked domestic violence investigations, often dealing with people who lost themselves in violent, controlling relationships. Tamia has a bachelor degree in criminal justice from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. She is a master graduate of Report Leadership Institute, a John Maxwell certified trainer, and a former Dill Carnegie instructor. She is also an ordained minister and a senior chaplain. Tamia is a coach, a best-selling author, a blogger and an international speaker. So welcome to me your show. It's really exciting to have you on today. Hello, hello. Thank you, Patricia. I'm super excited to be here. So let's jump right in because I know we have a lot of content to cover today. So Tamia, can you please um, tell our listeners how you excel in a very male-dominated environment, which I'm sure was an easy thing to do? Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, it was actually quite the challenge. So I was really blessed, though, because when I began my career, I, it was with college. I started off with my studies in criminal justice. And in college, I had decided, well, actually, prior to college, I had decided that I wanted to go into law enforcement. And I knew that that was pretty much all guys. Now, I came up in the 80s, you know. So we didn't have a lot of female role models that were presented for us in roles of law enforcement. We just had a handful. We had uh, we had the police detective, uh, Sergeant Pepper Anderson. You know, there was a couple of uh, other police women, but they were very few and far in between. You had Cagney and Lacey, that kind of stuff. So I went into the military because I knew that there would be training in the military, not only to help me be very strong position as a, as a law enforcement officer, but also get me well trained and to get me in the mindset of being able to be successful and to be able to actually convince people with command presence that I was in charge and I would be taking care of things. So that was very helpful in enabling me to be able to work alongside men with great confidence because the military showed me how to be successful in small things and to work as a team, which is a true concept of working with men because men are very team oriented. Men or boys from when they're little trained to be on teams and to participate as teammates and to support each other and to help the team be successful. Whereas young girls are not necessarily taught that depending on what their upbringing is. So that was some of the things that I did to ensure that I was going to be and was successful in law enforcement and working in male dominated environments. Well, and I'm sure it was quite the experience, too, to be able to just learn to, to be yourself and to fit in. Because, I mean, I worked in finance, so I know, and that's mostly male-dominated. Also, my new females are starting to come in. But it's not always easy finding your own place and just being able to be yourself and be respected at the same time. So that's always good to hear um, an inspiring story. Yes. So, Samia, can you please yes. tell our listeners what attracted you to work in law enforcement? I've always had a heart to help. I've had a heart for service and a heart to help. And, yes, indeed, I was a Girl Scout. <laughs> so, yes, I, I started very young as a Girl Scout. In high school, I was in student council. You know, uh, in the college, I was president of organizations and in student council and also worked on our radio station, I've always felt that I've been called to be a voice for those who do not have a voice or a voice for those who may not feel confident enough sharing or articulating their concerns. So for years, I've always been blessed to have the opportunity to be educated in areas of concern and to be able to articulate the concerns of the concerned people 
and also to be able to speak with the other party. So the negotiation skills and all those kind of things came from when I was really little. <laughs> and I can see how the Lord is kind of a mind all of these things that have happened in my life from being a girl scout to being you know in student council for being president of organizations you know for being active in you know even as a police officer you know when i was in the military and then as a police officer in my work and outside of work i always was of service i always went to my customer client which basically was the person who dialed 911 and asked for my help to find out what their concerns were to find out the concerns of the community and then to speak out on their behalf and to assist them in accomplishing that. That was community policing at its best, which as you can tell from the telling of my story, I was totally aligned to be able to work strong and well in that. And I continue to do that now as a retiree. I still teach the community. I still teach police officers excuse me, police officers. I still speak out in the community. I'm a chaplain. So I stay in service from when I was very little to where I am now. And my whole thing is I speak to people is just because you transition from one position to another, the core strand that runs through your life will always be there. And you always be of service and active towards a purpose every day of your life because you woke up. So there's a reason for you to be doing something active towards your purpose. I love especially how you're saying doing something active towards your purpose because a lot of us, we just don't go after what our purpose is in life or we don't know what it is. So it's always fun seeing somebody who knew at a young age, more or less, her purpose was to be of service and it really showed in everything that you do. Uh, like I said, it's always nice to see. So keep keep doing that because um, it's clear that you're on the Thank right you. track. Thank so you. Tamia, Thank you. can you tell us the most important characteristic that got you work to where you are now? Yes, I can. Uh, it was persistence. It really was persistence. And I learned that from, you know, all the way back when I tell you from the beginning. Think about the young child. I really want you guys to think about this. Uh, one of my friends was sharing this the other day, and I just kind of laughed at it, right? When a young child comes to their parent and they say they want something, let's give you a simple thing such as ice cream, okay? <laughs> the child says to you, I want ice cream, you know, uh, and mom says no, right? I want ice cream. Mom says no. Mom gives a reason why no, okay? A few more minutes later. Mom, can I have some ice cream? I said no, right? Mom, can I have some ice cream, right? Eventually, what happens? The child gets the ice cream, right? <laughs> I mean, unless it's like, you know, some health concern or something like that. But basically, it's because the child is persistent. The child knows what it wants, and it persists in asking for what it wants. Well, for me, the persistence came into play with every aspect of my career and my life. If I wanted something to accomplish something, I would ask. Because here's a key thing that I'm putting out to the listeners is that asking is so key. We don't get because we don't ask. Or as the famous saying is, closed mouths don't get fed. So if you don't speak out and say what your needs are and ask for what you need, how are you going to accomplish it? You know, we like to believe there's a genie in the universe that can read our minds and give us what we want. Though the ask is to ask, right? <laughs> Anything we want in life, we must first ask for. So with the persistent, whatever I desired, I would go out and find out what it was needed for me to do it. Because I lined myself up, like I said, I, I went through high school, I studied criminal justice, I made sure that I was right on track and in line for those things I needed to do to become a police officer, you know, or to move to the next level, or to become a speaker like I am, or to become a coach. It takes experience, it takes persistence, it takes staying on purpose, on task, and realizing that purpose and that thread. So what I would like to encourage your, you know, our listeners is that look at what is pursuing consistent strain going through your life? What do you see yourself doing consistently in your life? That will help you understand what your purpose is. What brings you joy? Do you enjoy just spending time with people, speaking into people's lives, you know, lifting people up, 
by maybe a positive word or a smile. I tell you what, the most amazing thing that we can do and share with anybody in this world costs us absolutely nothing is a smile. And you do not know how far and how long a smile will, look, will go, right? Yesterday, I smiled. I was walking around the mall, and there were people walking with their heads down. I'm like, okay, okay, you're at the mall, which, you know, a lot of us think is like the happiest place to be, right? <laughs> or not. So you're at, you, know, <laughs> you know, you're at the mall. You're walking around. Your head's down like this, you know. And so I would literally say, i smile on my face, and I'd say, hello. And one man, I tell you what, looked at me like I was speaking Chinese to him. And he was like, why is this woman talking to me, you know? But it was kind of like, I like to create the environment that I'm in, right? And I love my life. You know, I enjoy my life. I feel every morning that I wake up is a God above, right? You know, so when I go out in the course of the day, whether it's someone in the drive through or whatever it is, I'm going to give them a smile, okay? Even sometimes I have to make myself remember to, right? Because we go through traffic and stress and all this kind of stuff that comes in in our life. And that's a lot of probably what people were dealing with when they're walking through the mall with the, you know, whatever, you know, stress of the day or whatever is going on. It's on their mind and it's taking them out of the world and into their mind concerned about what's stressing them when what really heals us is to pick our heads up look out, smile, because this changes so much. Just the energy in your body, just the, the fact that you brought these up, <laughs> just picks everything in you up. The looking up, the smiling, the looking into someone else's eyes, right? We don't do that anymore. It's like, oh, let me just, you know, this person maybe has no benefit. I don't need to look at them or whatever. That's not what we're here for. We're here to serve one another. You know, and Zig Ziglar says it best where he says, you have everything you want out of life when you help enough other people get what they want, right? And if you can bring joy into somebody's life by a smile or a greeting, you could change the course of their day or their life because you never know what is going on in another person's mind. And what they may be asking at that time, they could be praying to God or the universe saying, just show me a sign that someone else on this earth cares about me, right? And when I smile at you or you smile at someone and say hello or have a good day or how's your day, sincerely from your heart, you never know how that's going to change that person's day. I so agree with that because I remember when I first moved to Montreal because I come from a smaller place, 100,000 people, but it's, I mean, compared to Montreal, which got a few millions. And I used to say hello to everybody and people used to look at me like I was this crazy girl and my brother was like, why are they looking at me like that? He goes, yeah, you're in Montreal, you can't say hi to everybody. And I'm like, okay. Oh. But it's so true, even just smiling because you never know, somebody could be on the brink that maybe they just want to take their life because you don't know what's going on in people's mind and just smiling or just opening a door for somebody or something can be enough, like you were saying, they're, they're, they're asking for a sign, okay, should I continue living or should I just take my life and then you're opening a door or you're giving a compliment or something and that person will see it as a sign like, wow, my, I am worth right. just being here. So you never know how you can inspire people. So don't just do it because... It, it, well, for me, it comes natural. We're givers, right? So when we're givers, it's like we just give right. and it's, it's normal. But yeah, you never know what impact. And I love how you cover perseverance because a lot of people, the minute they have a setback, they quit. Yes. And the successful people, I mean, Oprah, if she would have quit at the beginning, Oprah wouldn't be where she is or even Steve Jobs or Ford or whatever. So keep going at it until it be, you become, it, it happens. And most times we quit right before the universe or God or whatever is going to give you what you want, but we quit. So right. you're not able to do it. So just keep at it until you actually make, until it happens. I love how you covered both because they're both very powerful. Yes. So tell me, can yes. you please share some yeah, stuff? Yeah, there's that? a. Yep, go ahead. No, I was going to say there's an amazing saying that John Maxwell always shares, and it's the saying where he says, I'm either up or I'm getting back up. 
meaning that you never fail. Okay. If, <laughs> if any successful person, if they cannot tell you that they've had a failure in their life, then we need to be concerned because you need to do, 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 do in order to succeed. And as you're doing, there's going to be doors that close. Now, maybe you as a successful person might not look at a closed door as a stop, but someone who doesn't quite have that mindset may see a closed door as a stop. So that doesn't mean that it's a stop. It just means either you try the door again, it doesn't work, or you take another door, right? Because opportunities are always there. And that's what persistence is about. You always must be looking to find a way to accomplish what your goal is. Because until you absolutely get a definitive, this is so not going to happen. You know, like, for example, you, you're pursuing a relationship and the person passes away. Okay, so that means that that relationship's not going to happen. That's a definitive final closed door. Yet if you're looking to become, you know, a public speaker or you're looking to become, you know, whatever it is that's in your mind, you go small steps, small steps, small steps. Two people show up for your presentation. That's a win. Okay. Yes, <laughs> that's somebody a showed win. Up. <laughs> some people will Right? Somebody showed up. You know, yet some people will be like, Oh, two people signed up, you know, and so they're like all sad and, and, and no 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 no. You give those two people the best presentation you've ever given in your life because when you're faithful with the little things god will give you so much more and he wants to see that you are faithful that you really do believe the cause and what you're doing because if you are discouraged by two people now think about this how i talked about the smile and how it can change somebody's life right two people show up to your seminar or your training Guess what? Those are the two people that needed to hear every single word that came out of your mouth that day. And if you halfway do it because you discount that only two people showed up, you are being a disservice. And then think about it. Would the universe or God bless you for being so un- thankful, basically, for the fact that he did bring you two people to influence. Think about how those two people could actually impact or change your career. You know, I've had people go through my trainings and I do small leadership trainings with John Maxwell. And every single one I come out of, I get referrals to another group, to another group, to another group. Do you see? It's because they go, your energy, you're pouring into it. It's like you're pouring into us like we're 300 people and it's 20 of us, you know. But the thing is, Every single person counts and is important if your heart is right in what you're doing. So check your heart and make sure, like I was talking about, your faith in the upward motion and you're really, really pouring into other people. Help enough other people get what they want and you will get what you want. Sincerely serve and feed other people and you will be blessed too. I love how you covered the, 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 the success part because for me, I failed the most in the last two years than in probably my whole adult life. And I'm not going to say how many years that is, but I've had the most mm -hmm. success because I failed so much. So failure is not a bad thing to me. Now failure is a good thing because it means I'm one step closer to my goal because every time you fail, there's a lesson in there. There's something you need to yeah. learn. Learn from your mistakes and it's actually a blessing. So I love how you cover the failure because a lot of people think you just wake up one day and you're super successful. And it's you're successful, it right? <laughs> That's how it works, right? Yeah. I have a lot of people think, oh, you're so lucky you're successful. Yeah, if you knew my whole journey, you probably would be like, what? And that's why I'm successful because yeah. I kept at it. I had the no matter what attitude. Yeah, at times I took a step back. But it was just to evaluate, am I, on, am I aligned? And then most times I would realize, yeah, I'm not aligned. And then I would go back, okay, let's get back aligned and let's continue. But it's, it's a whole journey. Right. So don't just give up because something doesn't go your way. Look at it and see, how did I bring that into my life? What were my thoughts? What lesson do I need to learn? Because sometimes it's just a lesson you need to learn because you need to be a certain person to be for whatever it is that you want. So keep at it and right. don't look at failure as a failure. It's actually, to me, it's actually a blessing. And when I was able to do that, like I said, I've, I failed more often in the last two years, but I've had the most success. So I was able to shift my mindset because a lot of times we're thought as a child, failure is not good. 
But really, right. it should be encouraged to fail because if you're failing, you're going for it. So I like how you really cover the failure and then the, exactly. the perseverance. This is so important that we just go for it yeah. and that you surround yourself with good people too. Yes, you have to. Well, and the other thing you look at is when when you have something that you can or fail, change your mindset on that and pull back and go, okay, I've accomplished this task, right? I've accomplished this task. Go back to the two people in your meeting, right? So, oh, I've given my first live presentation. I've accomplished this task. Check that off the list. Then what you do is you say, okay, what went well? What didn't work? <laughs> What do I need to change next time, right? And you you take that to your closest folks, right? You're like you're talking about the you know uh, what is it? Jim Rohn says that you you are the sum of the five people that you spend the most time with, right? You know, so you want to encircle yourself with successful people who will give you feedback, who will help you to grow and get to your next level, you know. And they could be the five people sitting in the back of your room with your two guests that you're, you're speaking to, yet they're going to pour into your life and give you the feedback that you need to sharpen you, you know, because Stephen Covey says like the, the iron sharpens iron kind of sword, you know, thing that you put together sharp minds and you work together, you know, and you do well. That's the way you do it. So it's so key with we go here to mindset and how you think about it. Like you said, it's a failure. That's the word that the world uses, but I accomplished something. And I like to have tell people, you know, when I'm coaching, I tell my clients to go and write a list of the things you've accomplished in life. Right. And the reason I say this is because a lot of times when someone comes to a coach, they're at this impasse in their life where they really want to go to the next. They don't know necessarily how to take those steps to go to the next level. And what I have them do is reflect on how they got those successes that they got prior in their lives. Okay, give you an example. How did I complete college, right? How did I do my very and complete camp and complete office training and complete, right? How did I complete, you know, my police academy and complete my first year, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So you go and you look at what is it that I did to ensure that I was successful in those tasks that I have accomplished, right? You reflect on what you did to be successful already. <laughs> and then you apply that to where you want to move forward. Yet a lot of times what we do is we have this short-term memory loss. We forget all of the successes that we've had in life to get us where we are, and we focus only on where we're at right now and the fact that we feel we should be further ahead or we should be doing this or we should be doing that. Well, yes, if it's in your heart, you know, it's your desire to do so, yet do not forget your successes. Celebrate your successes. We realize it was in the past, but you did something correctly to ensure you did that task. So now use those same techniques, you know, enhance them if you need to, some feedback, some people who walk the journey with you, and then apply them currently to where you want to go. I still love that because it's so true. I mean, because a lot of times, especially if we're struggling, oh, I can't accomplish anything. But when you look back at everything you've accomplished, you realize, yeah, I am able to accomplish things. I mean, for some people, it could be just graduating from high school or going to university or police academy because um, stuff like that, police academy, I would have had a, whole, a struggle, but that's just my personality. But I mean, we all have right. our strengths, right? So I mean, you need to go back and realize, and then see also, because then if you, obviously you're able to succeed in certain things, go back and like you were saying, really yeah. go see how you're able to do it. And then that's going to help you a lot also. So I love how you really mm, cover right. all of that because it's really important. So, Tammy, unfortunately, yeah. we're almost out of time. I wish we had so much more time because we could have just talked for on and on and on. What's, right. new, what's next for you? What, what are you currently working on? Oh, well, thank you for asking. I'm in the process of putting out my first two personally uh, written books. I have uh, collaborated with you. I'm in your uh, your current manifesting book with you, which I, I love. I talk about the I am statements in there, which I think are so powerful, the words that come out of our mouth, what we are saying about ourselves because we're listening, okay? <laughs> um, but in my new book, I'm going to talk about some strategies coming out of the 
Fem Power Summit, which is actually what you and I had the opportunity to work together on, and we're actually teammates on the planning of the next Fem Power Summit. So one of my books is going to talk about the successes and the powers of the letter F, F as in Frank, right? <laughs> Having to do with Fem Power. <laughs> So that book's going to be about that. And then the other book is actually going to talk about the success tips, some of the little stuff that I've glossed over here in the years of study that I've had in leadership and things such as that from the military to police, you know, to now actually training John Maxwell and having done Dale Carnegie. Because the, the thing, I have you ever heard the saying where they say, if you ever want to hide something from a person, put it in a book. Have you heard that saying? It is a saying that says that basically there is so much knowledge out there and people will not seek it out or pick up a book and read it. So they say hide it in the very middle of the book and no one will ever find it. They won't read the book, right? <laughs> so my book is going to talk about being successful. It's not going to be a super long book, you know, because Adam Markell, you know, of New Peaks talks about how people don't get past the first 50 pages, you know, so I'm not going to have a super long book, but it's going to have some practical actions for people to take to be able to reach their next level and to step into the leadership role that they have. Because all of us are leaders. The first person we lead is the person that we open our eyes to in the morning, and that is ourself. So my book will be talking about that and challenging everyone to step into that best self for 2017. That's awesome. I can't wait to read it. So if you need any help, uh, you know where you know how to contact me. <laughs> yes, I do. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So Tamia, how can people uh, look you up? How can they find you if they want to know more about you? Excellent question. Uh, I would it, it, look me up on, I would love for you to grab me on Facebook because I'm super active on Facebook right now. So that is under Chaplain Dow because I do wear a minister. So it's C-H-A-P-L-A-I-N-D-O-W at, oh, it's Facebook, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, on Facebook. And then also if you want to find me, same thing, Chaplain Dow at yahoo.com. Or you can find me at my name for last, which is Tamia Dow at yahoo.com. But please reach out to me, contact me. You know, I do trainings. I do, you know, I do training on leadership. I do training on domestic violence. I do awareness training on human trafficking, you know, empowerment things about getting women out of violent situations that they should not be in. And also on how to educate people who love them, the loved ones of them, and helping them get out of those violent situations too. And then not only do I educate them on how to get out of them, and I talk to them about getting them to the next level, which is the fem power level, the empowerment and educated level, which is the key. That is why so many of the women in our society, or people period in our society, are where they are. They stay status quo because they're not educating themselves or more so, they're not using the information that they have. Perfect. Please reach out to me. Perfect. So thank yes. you so much, Tamia, for being a guest on my show. So thank you so much, listeners, for listening to the Manifesting a New Life TV show. My name is Patricia Blanc, and thank we'll you. talk to you next week. Bye for now.